Hello everyone, this is Dr. Harsha. As you all are aware that COVID-19 is rampaging all around India and it's claiming so many lives in the second wave, this is a very important topic. The difference between the first wave and the second wave is that we are seeing more and more sick children nowadays. So the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has come up with some guidelines regarding the treatment of COVID-19 in children. So let's just go to them. First, when a child is diagnosed with COVID-19, either through an RT-PCR or a rapid antigen test, they are characterized into three groups, mild, moderate, and severe. Okay. First, mild illness is when the child is just having a sore throat, maybe a cold or a cough, but he won't be having anything else other than that. These children just require supportive care. They mainly require rest. They require adequate hydration and adequate feeding. Make sure that the child is fed well and you can continue giving the same food that the child receives on a daily basis. There is no food that is prohibited because of COVID-19. This is a very frequent question we get asked. So I'm stressing again that there is nothing that is prohibited. You can give all regular food. Then if the child gets some fever, then you can give him paracetamol. The dosage is 10 to 15 milligram per kg per dose and it can be given up to four times a day. And if there is any danger signs or if there is any rapid worsening, then the parent should be advised to come back and report to the physician, to your pediatrician. Generally, these children do not require admission unless if home monitoring is not possible, then they should be admitted. Or also, if these children are people who are already suffering with some lung disease or a heart disease or some chronic kidney disease or some neurological disorders, then it's better to admit them and also it's always better to avoid nebulization no matter what and better to use MDIs. Coming to moderate illness, it is characterized as moderate illness when the child is having fast breathing. Okay, This fast breathing is different for different age groups. For less than 2 months it is more than 60 per minute, for 2 to 12 months more than 50, 1 to 5 years more than 40 and more than 5 years it's more than 30 per minute. And also they should not be having any signs of severe illness. So what do you do in these children? You have to admit all of them, you have to monitor their progress, um, make sure they're uh, receiving adequate fluids, you should avoid overhydration and underhydration, make sure they get paracetamol if they have fever and if there is any suspicion of any bacterial infection you could go ahead and start amoxicillin. If the saturation is falling less than 94%, then you have to start oxygen therapy for these children, either through a mask or a CPAP, depending on the severity of the disease. And then you could to add steroids only in cases of where the disease is progressing very rapidly. Then coming to severe disease. Severe disease is when these children present to us with severe pneumonia or ARDS, sepsis, septic shock or MODS. Severe pneumonia is when they present to us with cyanosis, saturation less than 90%, increased respiratory efforts like grunting, severe retractions, or they present to us with altered sensorium or seizures. All these children need to be admitted in the ICU, okay, and they require continuous monitoring. These children should receive steroids, they should receive empirical antibiotics and also oxygen therapy. Initially, oxygen therapy can be given through nasal prongs, face mask, HFN, HFNC or NIV depending on the situation of the child. But in cases of ARDS, like similarly in mild ARDS, you can go with HFO, HFNO. But in severe ARDS, we have to go with mechanical ventilation. And similar protocol that we follow for ARDS can be followed here also. Along with that, sometimes the child may also require sedation and fluid restriction. The target SpO2 in these children will be 94% during resuscitation, but once stable, we will only target the saturation more than 90%. If the child is awake, we can also consider prone positioning in these children. And also we have to do fluid restriction and other organ support like renal replacement therapies. If the child presents to us with septic shock, we have to treat it similar to septic shock or myocardial dysfunction where we first give some bolus with normal saline and carefully monitor these children and if and when required we can go ahead with inotropic support. Now coming to the main treatment in these children that is steroids, 
The steroid that we'll be giving is dexamethasone. Dexamethasone at a dose of 0.15 mg per kg per dose twice a day for a period of 5 to 14 days depending on the duration of the illness and the response that the child is giving us. An equivalent dose of methylprednisolone or prednisolone can also be used. Remdesivir, there is no trial data in children. So its use is restricted only in severe cases that too if they are present within 72 hours of onset of symptoms. And also before starting remdesivir, we need to have normal liver and kidney function tests. The dose of remdesivir for more than 40 kilograms is 200 mg on day one, then 100 mg once daily. If the child is between 3.5 to 40 kilograms, then it's 5 mg per kg on day one, then 2.5 mg per kg once daily. And this remdesivir is given for a total period of five days. So this is the treatment protocol for COVID-19 in children. I'm sure there will be more updates coming up regarding the treatment once there are more and more children getting treated and more and more children improve. Hopefully this helps a child and the link to the document is in the description. If you guys do like the video, please do share it and hope you guys have a great day.